Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for June 9th, 2022. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about cryptocurrencies and how to securely and safely and privately uh, obtain them through different means. Uh, I'm Carl. Hi, this is Amon. And we're going to begin. So in this episode, we are going to talk about cryptocurrencies and the different methods of how to obtain them. And we're going to start off by hitting the backstory of why one would want to get cryptocurrencies. So if you want to start off, Amon. Yeah, so uh, last last episode we talked about uh, uh, ransomware, right? And we said, you know, like as a last resort, right? You don't have backups. You 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 really have stuff that is invaluable that you got to get back. Uh, the only thing you can do now is you is you have to pay the ransom to unlock your laptop or your computer to get your stuff back, right? Which by no means am I saying yes, you should do that. There are definitely other ways. But we talked about that last time, right? Um, so now you're, you'll be instructed to go and pay, um, you know, a certain amount. Usually for let's say, you know, on a, here we talk we talk just about home use, right? So the average mm -hmm. is three to five hundred dollars for you to pay in uh, to get your to get the decryption key to unlock your your data on your computer. Well. We can do this two ways, right? We can do this just the regular easy way, which, you know, I can just, and you know, let's say they said, okay, you are going to pay me in Bitcoin, right? I can go and open a Bitcoin wallet, transfer some money from my bank account and pay them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem with that is my information is already on the dark web, right? Now, these people that attacked me have that, have my information because I, it, there, it's not just one way that he can make money from encrypting my computer, but if there's some data on there, he can actually make a copy of it, exfiltrate it, and he can sell that to other people who may have use for it if they don't have use for it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if I buy something, if I buy Bitcoin and I just send it to them, now they have that information as well, right? Which I don't want to do. Um, but before we get into how to do it, like on, on, on the back end, you know, like the, on the dark net way, um, did you want to talk about how to do it the regular way or you want me to continue with the dark web way? How do you do things? Uh, we can start with the dark web things. Okay. And then we'll go so, my way. Uh, yeah. So the, the reason, the reason behind that is like, like we said, we don't want to give up too much information or any more information that we've already given up. Right. So, there are different ways I can buy Bitcoin, right? And one of the things that you can buy Bitcoin that is not very common is buying it through local cryptos, right? And what that is, is you will be trading locally with people local who will, you know, you can deposit certain money in their bank account and they, they deposit, you know, a Bitcoin amount into your wallet, right? Um, well, the problem with that is it's still tied to you. So let's say I want to go on the dark net, right? Now forget the forget the ransomware for a second. I want to I want to hop on the dark net or the dark web, and I want to make some transactions, right? Well, if that if that coin is still attached to me, it, it it can always be retraced, right? So what I can do is there is if you go on the dark web, there's a lot of services where it's called lenders, right? Well, they will they take uh, coins from everybody, they shuffle them, and they, they distribute them back out. So it's kind of like money laundering, but it's for, for cryptocurrencies, right? Right. Um, so that's that's one way that you do it. But how do I even get on the dark web, right? There is, and again, this is kind of like, consider this episode as kind of like 
it's a summary of what we've been talking about, right? We've talked about VPNs, we've talked about anonymity, we've talked about privacy, we've talked about how to keep yourself secure online, the websites you go to. And now I've learned all these things and now I'm going the dark web, right? So the dark web really is just, it's, it's internet, it's information out there, but that you can only access it via a dark web address, right? And you have to have that address, which is a very long, weird, you know, number of mm -hmm. characters. You have to know what they are to go to it. Well, the only way you can access the dark web is through uh, a Tor browser, right? And what the Tor browser is, 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 is kind of like your gateway dark web. But I still wouldn't do that, right? Why? Because it still leaves a trace and your computer still leaves a trace in some of those, on some of those VPN or some of those routers, right? Mm -hmm. So the best way you do this is there is this Linux distribu distribution called Tails. And what you can do with that software, it, with the operating system, is going to install it on a USB stick and it works from the USB stick. And every time you unplug it, it erases everything. So it, every time you insert it, it'll give you an IP address, it'll give you a, a, a MAC address for your PC, it will give you brand new identity, everything, right? And when you, so what you do is you download Tails, you install, you know, uh, a, a Tor browser on it, and then you can start going to different dark net markets. You can start going to different, you can have, you know, a dark net or a dark web wallet where you put your Bitcoin in there and that's how you pay your rent. Um, it's, it's a very interesting topic. There's a lot of things that you can do and there's different ways of doing it. I am kind of like giving you a quick synopsis of what I do. But if you do a quick, you know, search, a quick Google search, how do I access the dark web safely? You'll find and you'll find great, you know, instruction step by step videos that will show you how to do that. And if you have enough interest, you can leave comments in there. If we have enough comments, we can actually create a video on how to set up a Tails instances so that you can use yes. it to go out there safely and securely. That's that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's the dark web side of things. So, so say for example you don't want to go down the dark web route. So what do you do? So there are ways to do this pseudo anonymously and kind of a little bit more anonymously without going through the dark web. Uh, one option is there's a website called Paxful, which allows you to purchase cryptocurrencies using gift cards see the, the interesting paxil. thing is yeah paxil yep and we'll paxil. have a yep. bunch of links in the description which we go down and uh that's very interesting Richardson. yeah I like that. you can actually you could buy gift cards so what i recommend doing is buying these gift cards using cash so again there's no records or any kind of association between a particular gift card that you buy and your bank account information or credit card information but it's also important to buy like a physical card because you're going to use that uh, the card number that you buy go to the Paxful website using a VPN so that your ISP doesn't really know what's going on and there's going to be a whole list of different buyers that have different rates and what I recommend is making sure that you read the reviews and make sure that the buyer that you're going to buy the crypto from is very reliable and has a lot of good reviews and by good reviews I mean actual real reviews not fake reviews to make them look good and then what you do is you put in your gift card number and then in exchange for that gift card number they'll give you a percentage of a crypto either Bitcoin or Monero or something and it's a great way to do this without any information tied to you really that much um, another website to look for is to see if you want to get some anonymous uh, and also decentralized exchanges is KYC not dot me what this does is it gives you cryptocurrency or cryptocurrencies exchanges that don't really I want to say allow but doesn't require a lot of 
personal information in order to cre create an account and to buy cryptocurrencies from them. It's a great way to research your exchanges to make sure that the ones that you're going to purchase from aren't going to be violating your privacy and give out too much information. And the last way to buy cryptocurrencies, which may not be 100% anonymous, but is to go out to like different malls or somewhere and find what's known as a cryptocurrency ATM. Now, granted, this is going to be probably the most expensive way to buy the cryptocurrencies, but basically go up to this machine and it's like an ATM, except you put in your money and in exchange for your money, it'll give you either bitcoins or other different cryptocurrencies for you to scan into your wallet. But usually these ATMs have a hefty like 30% fee. So yeah, that's how they're getting their money out of putting these machines out there. And another thing you have to consider is it is possible for you to be kind of traced because there's going to be a whole bunch of cameras around. So what I recommend is either having a friend drive you to this mall or wherever the ATM is or get public transit, take a bus or, or maybe even take an Uber to this place so that that way once the camera gets you, they don't get your license plates so they can, they won't be able to track, okay, this license plate's associated with this person and he walked in and went to this ATM and bought cryptocurrencies. And a way to get around the facial recognition is to wear like glasses or some kind of partial facial coverings to kind of not allow your full face to be discovered in the cameras so that way they can't really use the algorithms to do facial recognition either so with these ways the these will be the most private ways to do this so is there anything you want to add to this no no that sounds that sounds really good i yeah I didn't know about that website. I'm yeah. actually on it right now. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I did a little bit of research and I heard saw this website. Like, this is a very interesting idea. It's where you could buy cryptocurrencies with gift cards. It's like yeah, that's like the most anon. Especially if you buy the gift card using cash, <laughs> it'd be the mm -hmm. most anonymous way to do this. The only right. thing that would be able to tie to you is your ISP, but that's easy to overcome either oh, use vpn yeah. or use a tor browser or go to a library and do this so right other than your other than that that's very private and secure just have to make remember, sure that if, yeah if you remember, remember if you go to the library though it's attached to your card because you have to slide your card to log into the computer well get your hour or two hours or whatever it, it depends and if you use their computers or come in with a laptop or a tablet that you just yeah. use specifically for, you know, secure browsing. Or if you have yeah. your Tails uh, USB drive, you can plug in there too. There you go. Yep. Yeah. So that there's always ways around everything. You just got to be smart yeah. enough about it. You, you got to know what it is. You yeah. Know what it is. <laughs> um, so if that does it, I think that will close out this episode. If you have anything else you want to add? Nope. Nope. All right. So if you like what you hear, you can give us a like, follow if you're not following. And if you find this information extremely useful and you know someone else who may find this useful, just share it with them and say, hey, I heard this. And I want you to experience the same thing. So with that said, we'll see you in the next episode. And goodbye. Have a good one. Recording stopped. Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.